Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I've been um, introduced again and again and again. I've been prayed over again and again and again, even before the service start. Well, I'm sure everybody knows that today I'm going to preach on uh, to leave uh, to to preach on victorious Christian living through overcoming fear. You know, it is too common for me to ask how many of you have fear. I will change my question. How many of you have no fear? Oh, okay. You know, maybe I'll ask another question. Yeah. How many of you have fear of height? Oh, a few. Okay. How many of you fear the dark? You know, when you walk into a room that is dark and things just start to creep on into your mind and some real thoughts will just come into your mind. Anyone fear of the dark? Okay, some. Okay. Anyone here fear of cockroaches? You know? <laughs> wow, okay. Okay, quite a number of you. Uh, uh, especially those flying ones, you know? I, I know of one candidate, but he's not here today. Okay, you all can make the guess, uh, huh? Okay. There are many kinds of fears in life. Some can be more serious than others. Truly, how many of you want to overcome your fear? Yeah, all right, very good. You know, I, 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 I Google, I Google, and I, I search Mr. Google, and actually he showed me 10 ways to overcoming fear. There are 10 ways. One, take time out. Two, breathe through panic. Three, just be brave, face your fear. Four, imagine the worst. Five, look at evidence. Six, do not try to be perfect. Seven, visualize, visualize a happy place. Eight, you know, talk about it. Nine, go back to basic. And ten, reward yourself. This, this, these are good solutions. Some are not bad and some are very logical. And actually, you can rationalize your fear away. But it doesn't get rid of the root causes of fear. Would you agree with me? Yes. yes, right. Personally, I prefer to overcome fear in God's way because it treats to the problem from the root. The Bible actually gave us 365 assurances, one for every day in a year. You know, 365 fear knots are being written in the Bible. One promise to overcome one fear every day of your life. Everyone say, fear not. Fear. With conviction. Fear not. fear not. Amen. Amen. Let me encourage you. From this day forth, when you wake up in the morning, you will just say it aloud. Because this is a promise of God that has given to you. Say it aloud. Fear not. And I believe that when you say it aloud, you know, God, will be, God is able to remove all fears from your life. This morning, I would like to share with us three ways to overcome your fear. One, we overcome fear by the power of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, if you have your Bible, learn to turn to it. Because when you are outside, when you are at home, you know where to turn to when you need this verse to save you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I, I, I want us to read that together. Because I believe when you confess the word of God, faith will arise in your heart and breakthrough will come. Should we do that? One, two, three. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, of our power and of love and of a sound mind. Let us read that with conviction from our heart. Let the truth sink deep into your spirit, man. How about that? Let us read that again. One, two, three. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and of love and of a sound mind. Amen, amen. You know, this verse is a very powerful verse. That's why I, I, I initiate you to read that for the second time. Because this verse, it will tell us a few truths. First, God doesn't give us fear. The source of fear is not from God. Then where does this fear come from? The fear 
comes from the devil. He puts fear into our heart so that we can't function or live the life that God has for us and we're just being crippled. And also, at times, it is from ourselves because we're scared, because we are timid. Everyone say with me, fear doesn't come from God. This verse also gave us three very powerful weapons to overcome our fear. That is power, love, and a sound mind. Yes, and we are going to examine each of them today. I would like to give us some background of the verse. The Apostle Paul wrote this second letter to Timothy during his imprisonment in Rome in the AD 60s. You see, Timothy was a young man, very talented, and Paul just brought him along to assist in preaching of the word and to do church planting together. It's just like what we have been doing right now. And Timothy, being the second man, he has to take care of the things in the church. What he has to do, he has to manage the things in the church. He has to inspect, he has to reform whatever that was needed in the church, in the lives of the church. And Paul also urged Timothy to protect the church in face of struggles against the false teachers who, who, who were so argumentative, who were greedy, who were self-centered and engaged in pointless chatter. He told Timothy to guard the truth and to guard the good things that was entrusted to him by the Holy Spirit that dwells within him. So much things that need to be done by Timothy or alone by himself while Paul was in prison. And it seems that some of these duties are so overwhelming that, you know, beyond, beyond his ability. So in verse 7, it talks about a spirit of fear. In the dictionary, the following words are related, are related to fear. It will flash up on the screen. You can see that what I read. It can be anxiety. It can be concern. It can be agitation. It can be discomposure. It can be scared. And it can be even chicken heartedness and faint heartedness, you know, apprehension. These are the words that related to fear. If today you feel any of this feeling, that is fear. That is fear. It is not from God because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. On the contrary, God has given us a power to overcome fear. And what is power? What is power? Power is called dynamis in Greek work. You know, where you get the word dynamite that is so powerful and strong. And it refers to a power displayed in miracles or the ability of God or people to carry out their purposes, enabling the apostles to accomplish God's work wherever and whatever it is. In other words, it's the dynamite power of God enabling you to accomplish what you need to do. Where is the source of power? You may ask. And the source of this power comes from the Holy Spirit. Dynamis is the same word that used in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, you know, but you shall receive power, dynamis, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. What can this power do for you? What can this power do for you? Let us turn to Acts chapter 19, verse 11, 12. Because these verses will tell you how the manifestation of this power taken place in the days where, where, where Paul was doing his ministry. You can read that together. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. That's um, out evil spirits. Amen. Such is the power that was at work in and through the life of Paul. 
I would like to give a personal experience. You know, in the past when I was younger, I'm still young, you know, I, I thought it was a cool thing to take a ride on a Viking. You know, a Viking is a boat like swing that will swing you high up into the sky. And uh, being young and thought that I was brave, I actually chose a seat that is at the tail end of the Viking. You know, at, at this moment, it started to swing slowly, slowly, and then when it gets to the highest point, looking over the Sentosa Island, I thought it was cool and I, I was like getting excited and wanting to shout out my excitement. I tried very hard. But when I opened my mouth, in my mind, I was wanting to shout, nothing came out from my mouth. And at the very moment, I wasn't enjoying the ride at all because I was saying, quick, please stop, please stop. Because the fear just gripped my heart and I couldn't shout out. It would just stay inside me and the fear gripped me. And to some extent, this fear stayed within my heart from that day onwards. And it will paralyze me when I go up to high places. It will just grip me to some extent. You know, even as I was just driving, you know, I going over the root hum, actually I can feel that my heart was just jumping out of me to that bad. Do you think that it was bad? Yeah, yeah right. But to cut the long story short, I actually attended a divine exchange wholeness ministry and I was delivered from that fear. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, just another testimony. Two months ago, actually, uh, I took a break and then we went over to Korea. Uh, at this Korea, there is this, you know, there's this island called Nami Island. And, and, and my husband was so thrilled because they provided a zip line to, a zip line just to cross over to Nami Island without taking the cable car. And at that very moment, I was hesitating. But in that moment, I trust God, say, God, you already healed me. Yes, I'm going to try it. I, I put on the gear and then I was just like, from that 80 meter height, I just zip line across to Nami Island without a single fear in me. Indeed, God has healed me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Yes. You see, this is the power that God delivered me from my fear of heights. The power of God is available here today for you. You know, the power of God for you to exercise it, to declare it, and to cast out fear in your life. It doesn't matter whether your fear is a small fear or big fear. Whatever fear that you may have, God's power is here to deliver you. Everyone say, I can overcome fear by the power of God. Amen, amen. Yes, this is one way that you can overcome the power of the, uh, you can overcome fear by the power of God. Secondly, we, can, we overcome fear by the love of God. What is the love that overcomes fear? You know, there are four different words that explain love in Greek language. One, eros. Second, stop. Three, philia. Third, agape love. Honestly, I hope that I pronounce the, the, the words correctly, eh? In, in the right pronunciation. They are romantic love, brotherly love, family love, and God's divine love. What is written in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 is agape love, God's divine love. Agape love is selfless, unconditional, and sacrificial. It is the highest form of the four types of love. Agape is the term that defines God's love that is so incomparable, that is so immeasurable. God's love for humankind. You know, in John 1, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, we can read that on the screen, or you can just write down the verses. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not made perfect in love. Friends, this verse explains that agape love casts out all fears. When you have the love of God deeply seated inside you, when your inner most being know that God loves you, you experience His love again and again, and you will not be shaken 
by any circumstances around you. And even if fear were to come into your life, it will not grip you. It will pass. Because the love of God will overcome that fear. So it is vital that you experience God's love yourself. You cannot just have a head knowledge of God to overcome your fear. You must have an experience of God's love in your life. You know, in my journey, um, I suffered a few broken relationships in the past. And uh, there was one time um, I, I was hurt badly. And uh, during then, I, 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 I cried. I cried. I cried very badly. And, and honestly, I, I felt like there was a knife that just pierced through my heart. It was so painful that I, I cried. Do you know that to some extent that when you cry, but there's no voice coming out from your mouth, that, that kind of deep cry? I, I was feeling that pain. Other than that pain actually came along, I was like fearful of uh, losing. I was fearful of losing everything that came along with the relationship. I was in that kind of pain and fear. At the very moment, I just turned to God and I said, God, only you could and only you can take away that pain out from my heart and come and take away my fear that came along with this relationship of losing everything. When I prayed that moment, I just felt a peace and the love of God just subside in my heart and I, just, I was just totally, at that moment, I feel that peace and no longer it bugs me. I want to thank God, you know, for, for that power of His love that helped me to overcome that fear. Friends, it's vital that you experience the love of God in your life. When you know God personally and you experience Him, His perfect love will cast out all fears. First, we overcome fear by the power of God. Second, we overcome fear by the love of God. When we are under pressure or we are stressed up, sometimes we may just say we, 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 are, we are losing our, our mind. We just can't think straight. You know, in, in local language, sometimes you may say, hey, xiao liao. You know, sometimes you may say that, right? Yeah. So, to be in a state of sound mind, to be in a state of sound mind means to be sane. Yes. To be in a state of sound mind means to be sane. And it means to be able to have a full possession of one's mental faculties, to be sober-minded, temperate, having, my, uh, having mind, desires, passions, or duly moderated and regulated. I think it is easier for me to illustrate from the Bible that how this man actually regained his sound mind when he met Jesus. Let us turn to Luke chapter 8, verse 27 to 35. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-processed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and, tell, and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it has seized him, and though, he, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into the solitary places. Next slide. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He, Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the, the steep bank into the, lake, into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at the feet of Jesus, dressed in his right mind, and were afraid. How did this man get into his right mind or sound? 
The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, only you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. I say that again in John chapter 8, verse 32, and, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth is Jesus, and the truth is also the word of God. To know Jesus and his word will set you free from fears. Jesus cast out a legion of demons from this man and set him free. But this man continued to have his freedom by knowing the truth. He obtained a sound mind by learning the word of God. The Bible says, what the, the Bible says that after the demons were cast out of him, he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. What does that mean? It means he, has been learn, he was learning and absorbing the truth of God's word by Jesus' teaching. The other time, someone sat at Jesus' feet was Mary. She was learning the truth that Jesus was teaching. And Jesus said that she had chosen the better thing. Learning the word of God and filling your mind with the word of God will give you a sound mind. You may not be demon-processed like the man in the tombs, but the devil may attack you in your daily lives, give you all the attacks of negative thoughts, a plate of negative thoughts, uh, discouragement, maybe confusion, condemnation, lies, anxieties that causes fear in you. Today, you can choose to allow the enemy to plate your thoughts or you can choose to have a sound mind. Everyone say with me, I can overcome fear with a sound mind. Amen? Amen. How to have a sound mind is by filling your mind with the word of God. You need to take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to slay every confusion, to jab every deception, every discouragement, every lies of the enemy, every condemnation, every negative thoughts and anxiety and fear. When you pray the word of God aloud, the word of God, will, the truth will dispel every fear that binds you. This is a simple prayer that I can pray, that I can teach you here. You know, all that you can do is that, just very simple, you pray aloud. You can pray aloud like, God, you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love of a sound mind. Endeavor, you will have no, you have no, um, you have no, yeah, your, your power is not made whole in me. In the name of Jesus, I break your power right now and I cast you out of my mind. I reject every negative thought that you throw at me. When you pray like this, claiming the word of God, you will overcome every fear and what the devil that throws at you and the devil will free from you. You know, I'm reminded in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus was being led into the desert. How many of you know this story? in Luke chapter 4, where he was being led into the desert and Jesus was, was there for 40 days in the wilderness. In this Luke chapter 4, I'll read to you, Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness and after that, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. Then the devil, talk, uh, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you were, to, if you were worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written. You can under, underline that if you are having a hardcover Bible. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, even the, even the devil, even Satan knows how to quote the word of God. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall bear you up, 
lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Jesus said, It is written, It is written, It is written. You have read that. Three times Jesus spoke the word of God aloud to the devil, and the devil has to flee. The Lord used the word of God to speak against the lies of the enemy. Likewise, we can overcome fear through speaking the word of God. Do you agree with that? Amen. amen. Can we give a loud amen? amen? Hallelujah. In summary, three ways to overcome fear. By the power of God, by the love of God, with a sound mind. In order to overcome fear, we need one key ingredient, and that is faith. That is faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Yes. Let us read that together. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. You may know all the ways to overcome your fear. But without this key ingredient that is exercising your faith, without practicing what that was given to you, without stepping out of faith, you will not receive your deliverance from fear. So one way to exercise faith is to answer the order call today. That is exercising faith. Amen. 